Hey guys, welcome back. Or if you're new to this channel, my name's Chris. I'm back here again at the sawmill. This is a portable sawmill, the Woodland Mills HM126. And I had a request to do a video um, kind of on how to set up your sawmill area kind of thing, um, how to set up the site. Um, but as I kind of mentioned, instead of me kind of doing, doing a how-to or trying to tell you how to set up the site. Um, I don't feel that I'm that knowledgeable or experienced on that topic. This is the first sawmill I've ever owned and I'm kind of just doing it trial by error. So I thought a better thing to do would be to kind of walk you through the setup that I have here and what I don't like about it. Um, obviously the things that you do like about it, you might not notice as much, but you definitely notice those things that you don't like and that you wanna change. So I thought that's kind of what I'd run through today, just kind of an overview of the things I've noticed that I've done wrong and that uh, might help you from making the same mistakes or errors in the future. So, so just to give you kind of like a brief idea of the size of the site that I have here. If I walk right back to the woods here and spin you around over to the far tree line there, I paced it out. It's about 75 feet. And then from where I've got it cleared out from that way over to the other side, of the trailer over there it's about 50 feet so i've got an area here about 75 feet by 50 feet and i'll say i'm pretty happy with the size of it um i think this is always one of those things where you could always use more room um, but it's been working for me so far um i have noticed that just because of it being so closed in with all the trees if you're bringing things in with a tractor, this is the only way to get in here. One of the first things I'll mention is if you're going to set your portable sawmill up back in the woods like I have here, or, you know, another scenario where you're running into the issue of, you can see the trail behind me here that I've cut to come in. Um, before I uh, had the sawmill set up in here, I made this trail in a, a lot wider but I didn't make it wide enough to drive the logs that are a full 16 feet, which is what my mill can handle. It can handle a bit over a 16 foot log. So one of the things I should have did was make sure that I could get a 16 foot log in here on the forks of a loader or tractor or, you know, whatever, um, however you're gonna be getting them in here. Now, it turns out that I have ended up building myself a homemade log arch, so a lot of the times I'm just dragging them in anyways, so it's not a huge deal for me personally, but that's definitely something to think about if you're setting up a sawmill site that you wanna make sure however you're gonna be bringing those logs into your mill, you can do it efficiently and um, you know, for a while there, before I had the log arch, I was having to bring the logs up to the gate there on the tractor, drop them, then, you know, turn around, hook a chain up, drag them in lengthways, then disconnect the chain, pick it back up with the loader, put it on a mill. So, you know, that's just a lot of extra effort, um, just something to think about. One of the next things I'll talk about is you should have a good plan of what you're going to do with the lumber you're cutting. Um, having a dedicated spot to stack the lumber, I think would be a great idea. Um, as a lot of people probably do, I was pretty excited when I got the mill. I didn't want to spend all the extra time getting all this extra stuff set up. So you can probably see that I kind of just started piling lumber back here. Um, I've got some over on the trailer here. Then I've just recently started making another pile back in there. Um, I've got a pile here. So if you don't really have a plan or a dedicated spot to put it, you're probably going to do what I did and just started putting it wherever it would fit. And it's 
quickly starting to kind of you know encroach and close my area in even more so that's definitely something i'm gonna have to take care of here in the near future i mean it got me through the winter but now that we're back into spring and i can actually see everything that's not covered in snow again it really uh emphasizes the point that i'm gonna have to come up with a way to store this a lot better um, I can't keep doing it this way or else I'm gonna run out of room here very quickly which brings me to the next point is the area in front of the mill here you're gonna have to plan on having that completely open for the most part all the time because it might be obvious it might not you can't have a bunch of stuff in front of the mill ever because this is always where you're going to be bringing your logs in and loading it up onto the mill so you're always going to have to plan on having this area here in front of me open enough that you can get your logs up onto the mill and to that point you're always going to have to make sure you have a space to stack all your logs depending you know how many logs you have but like I have quite a few here you need a decent sized area for those logs to sit and room to get them up onto the mill obviously this thing behind me the weird stick frame looking thing that's called a saw buck if you're not familiar and this is one of the best decisions i've made so far was to build myself one of these it uh its purpose basically is for all the off cuts you can see all the off cuts that you're not going to use for lumber you can just throw on there and I have each upright space 16 inches apart so you just run your chainsaw down the same side of each spacer and that gives you 16 inch pieces of firewood and it is a huge game changer, a huge time saver. Um, I understand if you just have your mill, um, I did it for a few months, you know all those off cuts you kind of just throw them on the ground, I'll deal with it later. They add up so fast and it's so much work especially in the winter you do not trust me you do not want all your off cuts laying on the ground when it's frozen it's a nightmare trying to get them all cut up into firewood this gets them up off the ground they're all in the same direction you cut them and then you can just turn it into firewood really easily i highly recommend having one of these if you're going to get a portable sawmill and that'll bring me to the step after having this, which I am not happy with how it's going. <laughs> See all this? This is the firewood that's been coming off of my saw buck. And through the winter, I was kind of just piling all this on top of the snow. And as you can see, since the ground's really shifted and whatnot, it's all just in a big mess on the ground now and i really have to figure out a better way to do this i know a lot of people use ibc cages that would be an awesome idea they're kind of expensive in my area i haven't really found a good deal so i've got uh, some ideas in my head of kind of you know using some skids and making a frame to set this on because I definitely don't want to be having to restack my firewood all the time. Although now that the snow's gone, I could probably get away with restacking it, but just for the long term, um, I don't want to have to go through this every year. I'd like to have some crates that I can just pile it in, pick it up with the forks of the tractor, move it around, that kind of thing. So that's one of the lessons I've learned so far, I think. And kind of while I'm here, um, it kind of ties in kind of the same topic, but I didn't realize that sawdust was even a thing that you'd have to consider of what to do with. I, you know, you kind of, when you're using other saws like a skill saw or table saw even, I know table saws a little bit, but a lot of other saws, you don't even really think about the sawdust. It's kind of just something that blows away when the wind picks up or whatever. Uh, not with this, you can kind of see behind me here. I literally just cleaned all this out like a week ago and you can see like how much sawdust is just continually piling up here and that's one of the things that 
I don't really have a better solution right now, but with me putting my saw buck right here on this side, it doesn't really leave me a really good way to get like a, a tractor with a bucket or something in there to clean it up. I, um, so I'm considering maybe moving the saw buck like in front of the mill or something like that. I haven't really figured it out yet, but um, that's definitely something to think about is your mill's going to be throwing off a lot of sawdust and it's not something you can just like forget about. It's going to add up into massive piles after a while and you're going to have to figure out a way to get rid of it. And if you're like me and have stuff in the way, you're like I have to use a shovel and shovel it into the back of the side by side right now and transport it out, which is fine. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Like it's a bit more work than using tractors but uh, i'm not afraid of a little little bit of work but at the same time you're always just thinking in your head how you can improve the situation that you're in so that's one of the things that's kind of going around in my head and that'll bring me to this which is i've already talked about this in another video but i'll just briefly go over it again that um the actual base here that I have the mill set up on. Um, I just have it on six by six posts sitting on the ground and I've put braces to keep it solid. Um, one thing I'll say is I am surprised and pretty happy with the actual base itself. It's stayed good. Uh, like I don't have to adjust the track that often. It stays relatively good. So in that way, it's good. Um, what I don't like about it is coming back to the sawdust problem is, um, like I was saying, I did just clean this, all the sawdust out of here, um, especially up at the front where I cut a lot. It inside here, it gets all full of sawdust. And because I have the solid six by sixes running across on both sides. Um, I, there's not really an easy way to get it out of there. I have to just get in there with a shovel and clean it out as best as I can. But I've been thinking, you know, something getting these, getting this up off the ground on legs or something like that might be a lot better solution to be able to just scrape all the sawdust out from uh, underneath it. Um, this time of year, like, I don't actually have a big problem with doing it this way from now until October, November kind of thing. But once you start getting those freezing days again, all the sawdust in here, it just goes rock solid like ice. And then it's super difficult trying to get it, uh, get it out of there. So it just depends what kind of climate you're in. This way, I'd say works really good for warmer weather. It's not that hard to get it cleaned out of there, but once it gets below freezing, especially those really cold nights, it just goes rock solid and it's super difficult to keep cleaned out. Well guys, I thought maybe if you're just looking into things that maybe um, a good thing to show you would just be the actual dimensions. So you can kind of see, I've hooked right on to the end of the track here and you know, right to, right to the joint on the track here. That's what comes standard with the mill. If you just buy it as is, it's, you know, 12 foot, nine and a half, I guess. And then with the one six foot extension, which is what I got, you're just over 19 feet in total length. 19 foot three kind of thing in total length the track is 30 and a half inches wide and even though i still have the cover on this the unit itself ends up being about five feet wide the head unit so there's just a few dimensions of like the physical size of the mill that you're looking at, just in case you were curious. So I guess one of the things you should really weigh probably a bit more than I did when I was 
for setting this up is uh, where exactly to set it up. And in my mind, I kind of had, you know, it's a portable sawmill. You can put it wherever you want. I'm heading right back to the woods where the trees are. That's obviously the best choice. Get it right in there as close to what you're cutting as possible. And I say I kind of stand by my decision. Um, you know, my mill's here. I can literally just walk in there a few feet and there's trees that I can cut for lumber. Um, it is very nice that way, being so close to the woods and it makes it a lot easier getting the logs to the mill. Um, the downsides to that, I had to clear this area out here. This was all thick bush, like just how it is around me. That was a pile of work clear cutting this by myself. And the other thing about it is, would I like more room in here? Yes, I would, but there's two things. It's a pile of work to clear cut a bigger area. And B, I mean, this is our woods on the farm. I, I don't really want to start clear cutting big areas of it out. I want to try to get by with this the smallest area I possibly can and I think this is it. Um, would I like things to be more organized in here? Yes, definitely. Um, and I think there is a way for me to figure this out better rather than just clear cutting more space for myself. Um, so that's something I'll have to think about in the future. But um, I'm just bringing that up because, you know, the other option for me would have been there's other spots on the farm that are a lot more open that uh, maybe I could have done something, but it might take a lot uh, a lot more work in other ways, um, like getting the trees to them. Um, we've got livestock on a lot of parts of the farm, so you know I probably would have had to build some sort of fence and stuff around it. So that might not really be the best choice for me and. It's kind of just what you like. I kind of like the feeling of being back here in the bush with the sawmill and you know it's almost like a different world back here in the woods than being out in the field with the cows and whatnot. So I'm kind of happy with my decision to have it right back here in the woods but that might not work for you. You might have a different situation but um, all I'm saying is just give it some thought um, before you kind of just decide oh I'll just throw my mill over here kind of thing um, give it some thought like where you want it and what's going to be the best situation for yourself one other little thing I'll just throw in there um, when you're thinking about how to set this up is I haven't really see, seen this mentioned a lot because honestly for a lot of people I don't think it's a big deal it's not that big of a deal but you're you can see the stops over here the log stops you're always going to be walking and pushing the mill on the other, the opposite side from the stops. So that's just something to keep in mind because when I first got this mill and didn't really know anything about it, I thought that I'd, you know, put the reverse the mill from the way I have it now and I'd walk along the back side of the stops and, uh, you know that would just work out better for me that's kind of just what i had it planned in my head but um once the mill got here and you see um the way it's set up and the way the the there's different guards and stuff that it has to be on the one the side the side that it is now where you're walking on the opposite side of the stop so that's just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the direction that you're gonna be walking in and the side that you want the stops on and the side that you want uh you want to walk on because obviously the side that you can load your logs on is going to determine where the stops are um so you like for me i can't really load from that side it would be a nightmare getting my logs in around the mill so that's obviously why i chose to set the mill up the way I did but just some food for thought um, so that you know that there is a particular way that the mill has to slide you can't just reverse it um, so think about that uh, before you get it all set up 
So guys, sorry that I couldn't do a better job making a video of uh, like, do this, 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 and this to make an optimal sawmill site. Um, I don't really have that uh, in my knowledge yet. I'm working on it, but uh, I thought in the meantime, I could kind of show you how I have things set up here. Um, and obviously there's a lot of changes I want to make, but um, I thought maybe just by showing you the things that the, the changes that I do want to make, maybe that would kind of put that idea in your head, maybe um, that it's not the greatest idea to do this or that, or maybe it's not a big deal to you and you do like the way I have some stuff set up. So anyways, I thought I'd just show you around, show you my likes and dislikes so far, and hopefully that can lead you to make a more informed decision on how you want to proceed getting your site set up. Anyways guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.